There is no universal definition for a think tank. Uh, think tanks are in the business of public ideas, in the business of trying to link those who think about things deeply, who think about policy relevant issues deeply with those who are making decisions. But there are think tanks out there that are primarily dedicated to dialogue, getting people together to have conversations. There are think tanks that are deeply engaged in research. And there are think tanks that, that try and do both. But, but they sit at that intersection between academic knowledge, between the world of research and the world of thinking about things and writing about things and trying to actually get it into the public sphere and into real policy debates. I think you have different kinds of think tanks. You have some think tanks that see themselves as part of a political movement or an ideological movement or an, an issue-oriented movement, and they really are, are pushing an agenda that they believe in, and they see themselves as tied to that larger movement, to the advocacy organizations or the political organizations out there. And you have another class of think tanks that, that do not have a specific ideological or issue-oriented agenda that really are trying to throw light on a set of issues. And you know, they may choose an issue network, they may choose a broad agenda. In the case of, of bigger think tanks like the Wilson Center or Brookings or Carnegie, you know, a whole set of issues. And, and they're really looking at how do you, you know, generate the kind of dialogue and research that allows people to get a deeper understanding. And, and they don't, you know, at the beginning know where that's going to end up. Does that I think you see this around the world. You see think tanks that really have their, their own agendas. You see think tanks created by governments or by political parties many places around the world or um, by business groups that have a particular interest. And you also see think tanks that have really sprung up often out of the academic space of, of scholars and, and people who are public intellectuals who are trying to, to get ideas out there and don't have a particular agenda. I, I think there's the same range of, of kinds of think tanks you see in the United States um, in other countries. Probably with the, the one difference that in many countries, governments are much more actively engaged in creating think tanks than they are in the United States. The U.S. has some internal think tanks, like the Congressional Research Services, in many ways, a think tank for the U.S. Congress. But for the most part, we don't have public think tanks that are, that are created um, by government. The one exception is perhaps the Woodrow Wilson Center, created actually by, by the U.S. government, but largely an autonomous and privately funded organization today. But you do see in many uh, countries, actually, governments creating their own think tanks within the public sphere, giving them a range of autonomy perhaps, um, but, but really leading the charge on this. Yeah, I, I think there hasn't been a large debate yet in think tanks about what impact is. Um, I, this is a new field. It's one of the reasons why, I, why I've gotten interested in this issue is, is I think, you know, the, the ideas industry by its nature is hard to measure. It's hard to know what, what you're producing and, and what impact it has. And so we, we tend to fall into looking at what our output is. So we talk about numbers of meetings, about great reports that we did, about good research. But we, it's hard to see where your fingerprints are, both in, in public debates and in policy making. And so it's a good exercise. It's very hard to do, and it's hard to be rigorous about it. But it's actually a good exercise to do is try and figure out where your fingerprints are, you know, both on public discussions and on policy. And, and, and these are probably the two different arenas. You know, think tanks want generally, I mean, the, the, the holy grail, if you want, is is actually being able to influence a policy decision, right? I mean, shaping the way that some decision was made, perhaps in, in Congress, in government. But, but in reality, much of the time what we're trying to do is really shape public ideas, right? The way people talk about things, the way people frame issues. And if you can do that, ultimately you may influence policy. Um, it's important to have good ideas. It's important to have real research. It's important to have people you know, inside the, the organization who think deeply about issues. But you also have to have a plan for getting it out there to people. You have to figure out who your audiences are. You have to know um, how to talk to them. And you need to take big chunks of research. I mean, things that you're interested in, that you've invested time in learning something about or getting people together to think deeply about and cut it into small pieces that, that people can use in different ways. So it means, you know, you may want to write a big book about it, but you also need to write a two-page memo for, for policymakers. You need to tweet about it to, for, you know, general audiences. You may need to write an op-ed about it. Um, you may need to blog about it. You may need to go to someone else's event um, and talk about it. I mean, you know, taking these large things that we invest research and time and interest in and actually going out and figuring out how you reach multiple audiences in the formats that, 
that matter most to them and are most relevant to them is, is a key part of, of being relevant. You know, I, th I think partisanship is part of a democracy. I mean, I, th I think we believe that, that political parties are important, that they're an element, you know, we can malign them at times and, and we can worry about, you know, partisan gridlock. But the reality is, you know, ideology, partisanship, strong views is part of a, a functioning democracy and part of a pluralist democracy. And, and so I think having groups out there like Heritage and the Center for American Progress that are very, you know, party aligned, though they're nonpartisan technically, they're clearly are party aligned, is actually healthy. Um, we, there are other groups out there, the Center for Budget and, and Policy Priorities, for example, very good sort of liberal budget think tank. Um, the Cato Institute, which is very affiliated with libertarian causes, and we can name lots of others. I mean, these are really good organizations. You can agree or disagree with their particular stands on things, but I, I think they do democracy a service by, by putting ideas behind a political agenda and, and actually taking what are political and ideological agendas and giving them some real content, actually, that's meaningful. Um, on particular issues, um, I think that's healthy. It, it's not the space that, that other think tanks are in. It's not, it's not my preferred space personally, um, but I think it is an important space in a, in a democracy and it's something we, sh we should celebrate and, uh, and we should recognize as an important part of, of the conversation that goes on in trying to make decisions. I think it depends on the think tank. I mean, there, you know, Center for Budget and Policy Priorities does some of the best work on budgeting, and, and it tends to be used by Democrats, but, but there's more than a few Republicans that have picked up their reports because they're seen as doing really serious research. You know, you know where they started out, but they do some very serious research. I talk in the book about the Heritage uh, Foundation's work on Homeland Security. You know, Heritage Foundation is clearly a conservative think tank. They have an agenda. But some of their work on Homeland Security is used not only by Republicans, but by Democrats because it's very professional and it's well done and they have people on staff who know the issues. And not everyone has to agree. Not everyone has to agree with CBPP on their work either. Um, but, but they do actually do serious work and they're recognized as having real expertise. Some of the political think tanks do, you know, don't always do serious work. I mean, sometimes it really is an ideological agenda. But some of these organizations do actually have serious thinkers and in the end, serious people involved in the debate tend to also know who those serious thinkers are. And so, you know, even for, for people who are not pursuing a political agenda, we sometimes look to the political think tanks because they've got some good people in some niches who, who do really outstanding work. And, and, and it's worth recognizing that. I think, you know, traditionally think tanks were, you know, a place for academics who wanted to do something slightly more practical and for policymakers who wanted to get out of the grind of day-to-day policymaking, right? Or maybe, you know, be in a holding tank while their party came back to power. Increasingly, we're seeing journalists move into the space, you know, and more and more, actually. And, and New America has been a pioneer in bringing journalists in. But increasingly, we're seeing this in all the think tanks, you know, great journalists, as, as journalism has become a less attractive option, and there, and there are just fewer spaces in it for investigative journalism, you know, moving to a think tank and being able to do real investigative work, um, do real substantive, you know, investigative on the ground work, and put it out there has actually become a, a, a great opportunity. And I think think tanks have benefited from this as well, because journalists bring a great set of skills, um, both in, in knowing what's current, what's important, being able to do real investigation, and knowing how to communicate it. And so I think it makes, I think it makes the academics and the policy people who are already in these organizations um, much better also having colleagues now who come out of journalism. And I think it is one of the new trends. I, I think we're gonna still see, you know, probably the other trend that we've seen is ac academics have become, academia has become much more academic over time. Um, there was a time when you could be a professor and be much more in the, in the public space it's still true at some universities and at some levels of seniority, but it's hard to be a new professor at a university and be doing anything other than trying to get tenure. Um, and, and so I think think tanks have become an alternative also for new PhDs who are looking at a way of doing something. They don't want to go into traditional academics. They want a much more a career in public ideas, so it's, it's very attractive. Bit of a disassociation between, between academia and think tanks. Perhaps that's coming around again. Um, and increasingly you're seeing policymakers who are frustrated with a partisan gridlock that they face in policy. And so think tanks are a way of trying to get out, you know, reasoned ideas that you can bring people together. So, you know, think tanks become a nice space where you can, you can fill in for some of these areas that, that perhaps are in crisis in, in different ways.